Happy Father's Day, viewers. This little dig at HP Forms video got a lot more traction than anticipated, so I will try to narrow down some questions and new information in this video. First and foremost, the RAM questions. HP uses this platform for other similar models, so although this might apply to you, I can only confirm for this particular model. If your model is similar, the only real way to know is open it up and verify you have one or two RAM slots like we do in this model here. If you do, you can assume that RAM is upgradable to a higher capacity. As mentioned in the last video, HP likes to source parts from different OEMs. What this means is the speed and brand of your RAM inside your laptop will most likely differ from mine and others you might see online as well as various submodels using the same platform. I will link a single RAM stick that will work in the description, but this isn't the only one that will work. Standard laptop DDR4 SODEMs will work too, and capacity is at your discretion as well as speed. Continuing the RAM topic with speed, I mentioned before about possibly unlocking it. This model has a speed lock to 1866 MHz, and this is a limit HP set on the BIOS, and it's not configurable. HP uses a thing called Feature Byte and Feature Byte Enhancement Packs for partners. You need the Feature Byte code and a special .bin file from HP to change these. Although your laptop might come with 2666 MHz, maybe 2400 MHz, or even 2133 MHz, it doesn't really matter what you buy and put in there in terms of speed, as it will always run at 1866 MHz. Not only that, but trying to up the speed is a little pointless as AMD has these particular A9 chips capped at 2133 anyways. Or otherwise, it won't run in any faster even if HP didn't limit it to begin with. So with that, we're stuck. That leads us into the next topic of CPU. This particular model ending in 2DX, the CPU cannot be upgraded. This is a BGA chip, which means it is soldered directly onto the board. In this case, you get what you pay for, really, as they're not that great. And we're talking about this guy here under the heatsink. I also made mention of GPU in the last video, and that might have been a little misleading or confusing, so for that I apologize. These CPUs from AMD are really called APUs, and what that means is the GPU and CPU are on the same chip. What I was referring to in my last video was there is empty spaces on the board here, here, and here to facilitate a dedicated GPU and two RAM chips. This cannot be added by us. So I'll repeat that. This cannot be added by us. As I mentioned before in my last video, this platform and in particular, this system board is used in several different models, so these spots are merely here for a higher end model that will utilize them. Now is a good time to mention storage. First and foremost, this laptop does come with an NVMe 128GB drive, and like the RAM, your particular laptop could come with a different brand. Like with the RAM, you can upgrade this to a different brand, even PCI Express 4.0 drives for whatever reason you'd want to do that. And higher capacities. I've tested up to one terabyte on this laptop here, a silicon power NVMe one terabyte. In my last video I mentioned this laptop having space for a two and a half inch drive, which is true. You can see it here. The problem is it does not come with the caddy or the ribbon cable to connect here. The meat and potatoes in my last video was to rag on HP, their forums, and support because like with the RAM, there's a bit of misinformation. It is possible, and they tell you otherwise. The big problem is finding an 8-pin ribbon cable that actually works with this model, as most use a 10-pin. From looking around, it seems most places don't supply this cable at all, and neither does HP. They seem to act like it doesn't exist like this space in this port. From what I can gather, there's one cable on Amazon that should work, but I want to make it exceptionally clear. This cable I am linking, I have no way of confirming it will actually work, and I haven't seen anything online claiming it does work on this model. There's my disclaimer. From what I can tell, it's an 8-pin ribbon cable that actually will work on this port, and you should be able to connect an, uh, two and a 2.5-inch SSD to it and hold it here. And it also comes with a caddy, but I also don't know that if it'll, if it'll screw into here. Actually, now that I look about it and look at it, this uh, this particular screw port is for the back panel. Back to the NVMe drive, 
Another thing I learned is this model only uses one PCI Express lane, so we're not even getting the full speed of the drives they provided, just like with the RAM. There is no way around this. So I wouldn't waste your hard-earned dollars upgrading this turd with a Samsung Evo or Pro Drive. If you want higher capacity, stick to the cheaper brands with a DRAM cache like Silicon Power, certain A-Data models, or if you find a cheaper older 960 Evo or something, you can use that. One lane of PCI Express 3.0 is still a theoretical max of 1 gigabyte per second, and mostly you'll only feel the IOPS on um, on the better drives that will be rather limited by the slow CPU anyway. So basically what I'm saying is those large sequential numbers that you see like 3000 megabytes per second read and write and blah blah blah, that's not really what you feel. Whenever you're opening your laptop and you're loading into the system, it's reading a bunch of very very tiny files all at once and IOPS stands for in and out operations per second. And that is what you feel. So the little, the little 500,000 IOPS or, you know, the 4K read, write and all that kind of stuff like that. That's what you feel, especially in a slower laptop like this. I don't really see anybody copying, you know, multiple gigabytes, hundreds of gigabytes worth a second, you know, from one drive to another. And that's really where those sequential reads come from. And so in that case, they don't really matter all that much in this particular use case with upgrading this laptop. And as I said before, the slow CPU will pretty much limit it anyways. So I think that about covers it for hardware questions. I did not do any kind of performance benchmarks because quite frankly, this laptop is a turd. Upgrading the parts to the best I had laying around indeed made a small improvement in overall system response. but Trying to game or get any real work done on these is a true pain. If you haven't already, I recommend a full format of the drive and start clean simply to rid yourself of the bloatware that comes from the factory. This will alleviate most of your background CPU usage that makes it so sluggish when you first open it out of the box anyways. It doesn't make it a high performance machine though, and neither will kitting it out with 16GB of RAM or a fancy new 1TB drive. Game performance is limited to the APU and frankly, it's not great. My kids dropped these cheap Christmas presents rather quickly because they didn't even perform well in Roblox, which we all know isn't that demanding. They also complained about just basic browsing in YouTube video. It's a good thing I didn't buy it for them. Like, these things are terrible. And Tech Dad had some decent parts laying around before COVID scalp nation and mining hit anyways so they got they got an upgrade from these like i would say they only use these about two months after christmas um even even like a week after i made that video because i was looking at trying to upgrade them um as you can see i don't even have the second ram in here anymore i took it out and i put it in a different laptop anyways that's it folks again happy father's day and have a good day in general if you're watching this way after the recording. I did not expect the amount of views that I would get on the other video. I was just bored and trying to get through the holidays. Um, so if you're seeing this way later, you have a good day. And hopefully you don't have to deal with this thing for very long. Bye.